three part whatever um and i'm still doing the thing i i've been off camera for so long that i keep looking at my eyes instead of it the lens which i think of as your eyes um as the audience eyes viewer eyes whatever moving on all right so i forgive my mother and father i forgive my mother and father not only for that incident but for any incidents of cruelty and harm they have inflicted toward me on me um whether directly or indirectly whether intentionally or unintentionally my parents get blanket blanket forgiveness because studying religious and social systems has shown me what an oppressive force religion has been throughout history resulting in access to abortion in the early 80s uh, being inequitable um, and heavily discouraged. So in addition to my parents being members of Christian uh, denominations, both of my parents were in the military when they met. So, yeah. Um, so my, my mom would have been denied for, for an abortion. Um, so, forgiveness. My parents get 100% forgiveness over that. Only toward me. <laughs> um, and, and I, I forgive them for a lot, but I, I, and I'm not here to, to talk about my parents. They're trying, I'm trying to learn to respect people's privacy better and not tell other people's stories. Things that directly affect me, that's mine to tell. Things that do not directly affect me. I'm trying to learn not to tell um, and things that directly affect me where other people play a large role. I'm trying to learn to minimize um, and deal with that more effectively um, because I don't care about my privacy. I haven't for a really long time. I wanted to be an actress. Um, that was one of the things that I thought about being. And so when your face is in public you have to deal with a different level I wanted to be on Broadway for a while and so I have been preparing for a long time to lack privacy in my life um, but I have to be more careful about how that affects other people which is part of why I prefer to just withdraw um, Okay, so back to the story. Um, it took 10 years for me to suppress enough of my mistrust of the mental health community to seek health and wellness support. I knew I had needed. I, I knew, I knew when I was trying to kill myself that I needed some sort of support. I was excited to have an adult to talk to. When I went to therapy the first time, I was excited to have an adult to talk to. Even though it was framed as punishment. Even though it was framed as punishment. I was excited. And they crushed that. And I still remember the therapist's name, but I'm not going to call her out. But that's how much it hurt. I, I still remember her name. At any, at any rate, restarting the sentence. It took 10 years for me to suppress enough of my mistrust of the mental health community to seek health and wellness support I knew I had needed before it was framed as punishment, but could not seek effectively for myself as such a young person. Remember, I, I mean, 
I imagine it would be very difficult for a, a, a nine-year-old to say, Mom, I think I need therapy. Um, and I know that I didn't do that. I know that I didn't do that for myself. Um, and so that's the part where I do understand. I understand the, the desire to, to offer help where it hasn't been asked for. And that's one of the things, as an educator, I was disciplined as an educator. Look for the unmet need. Don't wait for someone to ask for help. That's fair in a space where that's appropriate. That's not appropriate in my fucking house if you don't live in my fucking house. But I understand it for, for young people who are developing because they're still learning how society works. Um, my groinal hernia scars from childhood. I, I had a hernia on one side, um, but they did surgery on both sides. And so now I have concerns about that. Um, when I was in my failing out of grad school, last, the last, my, my last stint in grad school where I failed, um, quite expensively, um, I, I did pull up some, some scholarly articles on, on groinal hernia surgery, um, because I am concerned. So, but I wrote let me not just talk at you. Let me read what I wrote. Uh, my, groinal hernia, my groinal hernia scars from childhood that may have resulted in, um, and I wrote infertility, sterilization. I, I don't know which one is best appropriate here. Um, but I, I am concerned that I was unwillingly and unwilling unwittingly sterilized um, as a child but if that happened to me I would have preferred to know and the thing I would be angry about is that I couldn't use that knowledge for myself that would have made life as a sex worker a lot less scary oh I'm not gonna have to take off you know nine months to have a baby or whatever, or not gonna have to go get an abortion every quarter or whatever. Um, so it's not, I have a problem with the level of deception in the medical community that is accepted as good practice. Um, because it makes room for things to continue, for, for corrupt practices like forced sterilization to continue in poor communities and um, especially communities of color. All right, so um, that's, one, that's one of my personal concerns. Um, and so when I think about things like the Tuskegee experiments um, or Henrietta Lacks um, and her cells being stolen, um, I have physical scars on my body that make me have concerns that I have been experimented on and treated against my will in ways that... Um, or without my knowledge, without my knowledge. Lack of informed consent. Because maybe they would have talked me into it when I was little. I wanted babies until I was, I don't know, maybe 12 or 13. My first, after my first pregnancy scare, I was like, hmm.